Okay, let's get started. Uh, any other question on project? I still have one email that I haven't replied. It's still in my mailbox. And I don't have the strength to reply to that email. It's the same email that I've received several times over the past two, three weeks about the project. So I don't. So if you have a question, ask me now. Okay, otherwise I will assume that you know exactly what you want to do for the project. And then I will not reply to any emails about choosing the project topic. I can reply to emails that comes if you're working on the project and you get stuck on some point, then I can definitely reply and I'll help you with the project. But I won't help you with project topics anymore. So if you have a question, you have to ask me now. Everyone clear on what they want to do for the project? Perfect. Okay, so let's uh, move forward with our lives. Uh, we'll talk about gradient projection method, a uh, very important method for constraint optimization. Okay, and I want to write the iteration again. It's xk plus one equals xk minus alpha, no, not minus, plus alpha k x bar k minus xk. Okay, where x bar k is the, is the new point. Okay, so you, how do you get the feasible direction? You look for a point within the set. So this is your set, convex set x. This is your xk, you look for a point x bar k and then you move in this direction, uh, standing at xk, okay? And your alpha k is the step size that controls how much, how la large of a step you want to take in this particular direction, okay? In the gradient projection method, what's this? Okay. Um, in the gradient projection method, sorry, in the conditional gradient method, what was the method to find this x bar k? Anyone remembers? Frank Wolf. x bar k was argmin x in capital X gradient f x k transpose x minus x k, right? This was the conditional gradient method that we studied in the previous class. And the idea is to minimize the inner product between the, uh, between the first derivative of the function and the direction that can reduce this inner product, okay? So you want to take a step in that particular direction. So now in gradient projection method, you do something different. So what is it? What's the idea behind gradient projection method? So you take x bar k, so this is okay. So this was remember this is exactly uh, what we had in the in the gradient descent. But what's the problem with this approach? So s k is some some parameter greater than zero. What's the problem with this approach? Anyone remembers? If I, if I take xk and I pick a value of sk and subtract the xk minus sk, the gradient of fxk, so let's look at the picture. This is my xk. This is my negative f of xk and so if i if i pick an sk which is large enough or or sk which is strictly positive this is my xk minus sk gradient fxk so what's the problem with this approach so this this value x bar k is going out of the set right so what's the obvious thing to try? Just project it back onto the set. So I'm going to take x bar k as the projection of the usual gradient descent that we use in the unconstrained optimization.
okay again the idea is to use the same method as we have in the steepest descent for unconstrained optimization and then project the value back to the set itself and that gives me x bar k then I can pick some alpha k greater than 0 and descend along this particular direction. Okay, so now we have two different parameters to play with. We can play with alpha k or we can play with s k. Okay, and these two are completely separate parameters. So let's see why. Okay, I have the same set here. I have my x k. Okay, so if I pick my s k small and I project it back. And then I'm going to move in this direction, right? From here to here. On the other hand, if I pick my xk large, so this is my xk minus sk gradient fxk, and then I project it back onto the set, then this is my descent direction this is my x bar so this is my x bar of k this this point is my x bar of k and now i have to descend along this direction okay so picking a large so 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 essentially the idea is there is a tension not a tension but there are two parameters sk and alpha k that you need to choose now and you need to decide uh, which parameter you want to take uh, so you want to take sk to be large or you want to take alpha k to be large. Uh, so that's still a thing that needs to be decided. And so let's study what some of the methods are. Uh, any, any question? Yes. Why can't x k bar, uh, x bar k be x k plus 1? Well, yeah, that's one option. So if you pick alpha k equals 1 all the time, then x k plus 1 is x bar k. OK. Uh, but uh, as you know with large step sizes which is alpha k equals 1 sometimes you get into trouble so you may or may not want to have alpha k equal to 1 depending upon whether your algorithm is converging or not and you say because we didn't find an optimum point inside the set it should be on the boundary right it will not always be at the boundary sometimes it can be within the set itself okay so let's see you want to minimize f of x such that ax is equal to 0, what would the boundary be? It's a hyperplane in this large space. So what would the boundary be? It's not at the boundary, it's somewhere inside the set, right? But, but yeah, there is no boundary as such, okay? The, or, or you can say that the boundary is the surface, the hyperplane itself, okay? So, there's, uh, so that's the only boundary that you have. So I want to write down the question is how to pick alpha k and s k. So let's look at some of the methods. say sk equal to constant alpha k Armijo's rule okay so you have sk just pick a constant 1 okay or 0 0.5 and then you pick alpha k according to Armijo's rule second option is sk is a constant 
and alpha k is argmin alpha in 0 1 f of x k plus alpha x bar k minus x k. Okay, this is known as this is known as limited minimization. Okay, some of the assignments in question two, or maybe in question uh, sorry in uh, not question two, but in either assignment two or assignment three would depend on. Uh, would be uh, maybe not in assignment two. Assignment two is all unconstrained optimization. Has anyone looked at it? Assignment two, everything is unconstrained optimization there, right? Do I have any constrained optimization in assignment two? No, no one has looked at assignment two. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, I, I don't usually work like that. The day I'm assigned an assignment, I start working on that assignment that day itself. But maybe. The class doesn't. Uh, no one in the class does that. Anyways, you should do that. Okay, it's a good good habit to inculcate that the day assignment is assigned, you start working on that from that day itself. Um, it's good in general in life. Okay, especially those who are PhD students. Okay, you can't afford to do assignment on the next day when it is assigned. Okay, you have to do it on the day it is assigned. Uh, Okay, so this is number one method, number two method, number three method, alpha k equals one. So which means that x k plus one equals x bar k. And then s k, it's a very, very nice way of uh, picking x k. It's called Armio's rule along projection arc. Okay, it's a very fancy name. Let's see what that what that means. Okay, so here is the idea. So remember how how did we uh, how did we pick Armijo's rule? So the idea was you have this parameter beta, right? And you keep multiplying, uh, you keep taking beta raised to m, so beta raised to one, beta raised to two, beta raised to three, and satisfy some condition. And if that condition is satisfied, you take that as your alpha k, right? That was the idea of Armijo's rule. So we are going to use a similar idea. So I'm going to define x of s equal to, or x k of s is equal to x k minus s gradient of f x k. Okay, this is how I'm going to define it, and the idea is as follows. I have this x k. I have this gradient of minus gradient of f x k. So I pick a value of beta equals to one, or sorry, be beta raised to zero. So that's x k minus beta raised to zero gradient of f x k, and I project it. If it doesn't satisfy the criteria that I'm going to write on the board in some time. If it doesn't satisfy the criteria, the Armijo's criteria, then you change the value of beta, and you pick beta raised to one. So that's x k minus beta raised to one, f of x k, and then you project it back. So this gives you x k of beta raised to zero, x k of beta raised to one. 
that will be x k of beta raised to 2 and so on. Okay. So, in this process you are essentially moving along this along this projection along this arc okay this is this is an arc and this is what you are doing you are moving along this arc by changing the value of beta so what's the criteria okay the criteria is f of xk minus so alpha not alpha k sk equals to beta raised to mk where mk is greater than or equal to 0 is the minimum m in uh, or minimum m such that f of x k minus f of x k beta raised to m s bar is greater than or equal to sigma So, your s bar is some parameter. So, s bar is greater than 0 and my sigma is greater than 0 and my beta is in 0 comma 1. So, it is open interval 0 comma 1. So, typically you would pick s bar to be equal to 1, does not matter sigma to be a small number 10 raised to minus 2, 10 raised to minus 3 and beta to be around 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 or 0 0.99. Okay, so, you will implement this algorithm uh, in one of the assignment problems, probably in assignment 3 and uh, I will give you what the value of s, s bar and sigma and beta is, uh, beta r for that particular question. Okay, but this, these are the parameters that you choose before you start solving the problem. So, you pick these parameters at every point of time x k, you figure out what negative of f x k is, you keep projecting this, you pick beta raised to 0, beta raised to 1, keep projecting it back, check for this condition, if this condition is satisfied, take a step okay, and then restart this entire process again. Okay, is that clear? Okay. So, essentially you are looking for the point x bar k in this particular along this arc okay. by picking an appropriate value of uh, by picking an appropriate value of beta raised to s bar beta raised to m k. Any question on that? Okay, and it has a beautiful name, it is called Armio's rule along the projection arc. And then there is this fourth way of picking, fourth way of picking where you pick alpha k equals to 1 and you pick s k equals gamma over k plus 1 or in uh, where s k goes to 0, gamma is a positive number as k goes to infinity and summation of s k equals to infinity. 
k equals 1 to infinity. Okay, so the sum of SK diverges. Or oh, by the way, SK also has to be greater than zero. Okay, so these are various ways by which you can pick your SK is an alpha K, K in gradient projection method. Um, the method is fairly simple. You again have this underlying basic update rule. Uh, you can pick SK and alpha K according to various uh, methods. You can also mix and match. So you can, for instance, uh, one way of mix and mixing and matching is you pick SK equals constant and alpha K equals constant for the first 100 iterations. And then after the 100 iterations are over, you pick SK equals constant and then alpha K equal by Armio's rule for another 100 iterations. And then you can pick uh, alpha K equals one and SK according to Armio's rule along the projection arc for until the algorithm converges, okay? So that's also an option available to you. If you're having trouble using a single rule and getting convergence, you can mix and match the rules in order to make sure that your algorithm converges. Okay, it's always a possibility. Any question? Yes. That's a good point. So let's see. So his point is. Uh, would it be okay if we take alpha k to be large? But by the way, alpha k has to be between 0 and 1. So by large, I mean you're saying 1, okay? So alpha k equals 1. And all we do is change sk to, to a small number and then start at the very beginning along that. Uh, no, I don't think it's going, to make, it's going to make much sense. I mean, you can pick alpha k equals 1 but you should take SK to be as large as possible uh, so that you can take larger steps at the very beginning. And once you get closer to the optimal solution, then you need to be very careful about your choice of alpha K and SK. But if you are far away, you can take longer steps to get to that basin of attraction. <coughs> Any other question? Okay. So, so far we have been uh, doing optimization in the original space that was provided to us, right? So we were given this space X or the subset X in Rn and we were trying to do an optimization within that subset itself. Now, the next method I'm going to introduce is called scaled gradient projection method. And in that case, you kind of distort the subset in a way so that it becomes easier for you to solve the optimization problem. Okay, so let's see what that does. Okay, so in other words, think about it this way. Suppose you have an ellipse, okay? You have an ellipse and you want to solve an optimization problem over an ellipse or ellipsoid in higher dimension. Uh, wouldn't it be better if you had a circle or a sphere and you were doing an optimization over the sphere because the projection on the sphere is much easier to compute. It's just rescaling the vector, right? So, so what you do is you transform the original space in which this subset looked like an ellipsoid to a new space where this subset looks like a sphere. And then you solve the optimization problem in this new space and then you project the solution back to the original space. Okay, so let's let's see how that works. I this is scaled. So I want to minimize f of x 
such that x is in capital X. Let's define y, which is h k raised to half x, where h k is a positive definite matrix. So now I want to ask, what is the square root of a positive definite matrix? I'm not expecting you to know, but I want someone to come up with a guess what the square root of a positive definite matrix should look like. Sorry? Okay. 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 So you are saying that I have my HK. I know that it's a positive definite matrix. So I'm going to write it as U lambda U transpose, where this lambda is a diagonal matrix and U is an orthogonal matrix. So it consists of all the eigenvectors of uh, the matrix HK. So my lambda is lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, all other elements are 0. So I take lambda raised to half, which is square root of lambda 1, square root of lambda n. Okay, and then I define my HK raised to half as U lambda 1 over 2 U transpose. Okay, so this is, you are right, this is the way one can define square root of a positive definite matrix. Why do we need this matrix to be positive definite? Where, where would we fail in this entire process if the matrix was symmetric but not positive definite. Square root, right? These terms will become imaginary. Uh, so we need HK to be strictly positive definite. Or in fact, even semi-definite is fine. Even if it is semi-definite, it's fine. But in this case, we want HK to be strictly positive definite. We don't want to lose any information going from this space to that space, right? We want this HK raised to half to be an invertible matrix so that we can seamlessly go from this space to this space and this space to this space. Let me define HK of Y as F of HK raised to negative 1 over 2. So that's inverse of HK raised to half multiplied by Y. Okay, so that's my uh, new function that I want to minimize. And I just want to note here that the gradient of HK at Y is HK raised to minus one over two, gradient of F HK raised to minus one over two multiplied by Y. U is the set, it's a set of eigenvectors of this matrix HK. So by the way, any matrix that has, uh, that is diagonalizable, you know what the concept of diagonalizability is? So any matrix that is diagonalizable can be written in this format. Uh, but usually it's written as U lambda U inverse. Okay, but in case of positive definite ma or symmetric matrices, U inverse is the same as U transpose. Okay. So now, what we want to do 
is the So now we want to uh, we define yk to be hk raised to one half x for x in capital X. Okay, and the claim is of course minimum of f of x x in x is the same as solving minimum of hk of y such that y is in yk. Okay. And I want to give you a picture. So my x was an ellipse. This is my x. I transformed it by multiplying this space by matrix hk raised to 1 half so that yk became a circle. Oh, sorry, not a circle. This is an ellipsoid and this is a sphere. Okay, so we transformed this space in a manner that this became a, a sphere. And now the idea is we want to use the gradient projection method for this problem because we know that the projection is much easier on a sphere as compared to projection on a on a uh, over a ellipsoid so i have yk plus 1 equals yk plus alpha k y bar k minus yk and my y bar k is argmin or is projection of yk minus grade sk gradient hk yk and this projection is over the set capital yk and i want to expand it so that's argmin y in capital yk norm of y minus yk plus So let's open this uh, this bracket. What do we get? Y bar k equals to argmin y in y k s k square norm of gradient h k y k square. plus y minus yk transpose y minus yk plus 2 sk gradient Okay, so I want to I want to know whether this term is participating in the optimization problem or not. 
Okay, so we are arg we are taking the argument with respect to y in the set y k, and my question is whether this term is participating in the optimization or not. Does this depend on y? No, right? This is a constant. This is a constant because it depends on y k and s k doesn't depend on y. So does not depend on y. So we can drop it from the optimization problem. And the second thing I'm going to do is divide the entire optimization problem by 2sk. Okay. So what I get is this is the same as argument of y in yk of 1 over or gradient of hk yk transpose y minus yk plus 1 over 2 sk y minus yk transpose y minus yk. Yes. I just have a question on the notation. Sure. So the capital Y without the subscript K, uh, you have Y minus YK. Oh, this is yes. not capital Y, unfortunately. Oh. I'm mixing up. All the same Ys? So except for this, this is a set. Oh, okay. All other Ys are small Ys. Oh, okay. Oh, this is also small Y. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm not consistent with my y's. Yeah. So I was saying that the choosing alpha and s still hold in this transform space uh, yk as it does in the set x. Yes. So what what was your question? So like when you're choosing s and alpha, that doesn't change by the transformation of the space. No, it does not. You still you still want to rem remember you still want to minimize this problem, right? right? So it doesn't change in any way. Um, So let's get this entire equation in terms of x, in terms of x's, okay? Why? How do we get that? So we know that yk equals h. This is not yk equals hk raised to half x. So, and we know that gradient of hk yk equals to hk raised to minus half gradient of fxk okay so what do i have what i have here is x bar k which is hk raised to negative half of y bar k can be given by argument x in capital X Okay, so what uh, so what I'm doing is replacing all y's and gradient of h k in the original format to see what's happening in the original space. So this is what is happening in the original space. 
this is what is happening in the transformed space. So in transformed space, I have y k plus 1 equals y k plus alpha k y bar k minus y k. Okay? So if you follow this iteration, it's the same as this iteration in the original space. Okay, and you are essentially solving this minimization problem in the original space if you go ahead with this formula. Okay, so you can do the problem in either space. This is what you would get in the original space. This is what you would get in the transformed space. So whichever one find, you find it convenient, you can use that space to solve the problem and then project the solution back to the original space. Yes, you can pick. So the option you have an option here of picking a new HK, new positive definite matrix at every point of the iteration. When we were transforming in respect of the entire space, we you can you can have HK equals constant for all K, which is what your idea is. But I'm trying to be more general and saying that well you can transform the space any way you want at every iteration. It may or may not give you any strategic advantage. So if we are changing HK at every transformation, mm -hmm. so at every time step, so then how can we write HK x like y equal to HK x? We don't know which one we write. Here? Y k is equal to HK x k is fine. Okay. Yes. Here. Yeah. So y k is equal to H k half x k is fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. How is y equal to h half x invalid? I mean, using the script, such as k. Uh, I mean, this is like h should be this constant. Right? You see, what I'm saying is, at every point of time, you have the option of transforming the space any way you want, as long as this matrix HK is positive definite. Okay, So at step K, your space would be, your, your space would look something like this, Y equals HK raised to half X. Okay, But of course we need to carry the iterations here. So that's why I'm kind of sloppy with my, with my subscripts, because sometimes I'm talking about iteration, sometimes I'm talking about the space itself. Okay, so you have to uh, fill in those gaps uh, by making sure you understand when am I transforming the space and when am I talking about the iteration itself. Okay, I, uh, maybe you should think a little bit about it uh, after the class to get a clarity about what's happening here. You're essentially trying to solve a new a problem over a new space at every point of time, starting with a solution that you got from the previous iteration. Okay, and it so turns out that it will converge. Okay, uh, but okay, it will converge, uh, and it might converge much faster than the original gradient projection method. Okay, which wasn't a scaled, not scaled gradient projection method, but the original gradient projection method. Now. My question is, we did this same exercise for unconstrained optimization. And my, my question is, what is an appropriate value of HK that we should take here? Question is, what should be the value of HK in order to speed up the convergence? We did this for unconstrained optimization. Any any thoughts, any guesses? Answer. I want a guess, not from you. <laughs> okay, that's good. Who wants to guess? What is a good value of HK here? Second derivative? 
right? If you take second derivative of f at x k as your h k, or rather it should be the other way, h k equals the second derivative of f, then you are essentially transforming the space in a manner that you are getting the descent in a direction that is closer or that is closest to the basin of attraction where the optimal point is. Just like it was the case in the Newton's method where you were trying to reorient the vector towards the minimum point every time in the Newton's uh, method, right? in the Newton's uh, iteration. So that's the same idea here. This is the second order method for, uh, for, project, for uh, constrained optimization and this is known as constrained Newton's method. It, had, it, has, it has very good convergence uh, uh, guarantee. Your algorithm would converge pretty fast because you are always reorienting the vector in the direction in which you will get the maximum benefit. Any question about that? Yes. No, we are not, we are not, uh, if you are solving the problem in the original space itself, I am assuming that you are able to do this argument very easily. Okay, so either you, so you have two, there are two methods on the board right now. One method is scale gradient projection method, where you have the ability to choose HK as you want to make your projection much easier. Or if you are able to solve this problem quickly, you can stay in the original space and instead pick the scaling factor HK as the second derivative of F. Okay, and that's the constraint Newton's method. So there is no projection term in this? No, there is no projection term here. So we can directly use well, there is a projection term which is this X bar K. I mean, X bar K is what? It's argument of this particular matrix. Does that, does that make sense? No. You have a question? No? Okay. So this is second order method, very fast, super linear convergence. Uh, the, the original gradient projection method was the first order method. It had whatever the convergence rate of steepest descent is, it inherits the same property. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next topic, which is uh, manifold suboptimization. Uh, well, it's two metric projection method. Uh, I don't want to start that topic right now. But let me give, yeah. Uh, this is a positive definite matrix. Yeah, but they're, they're not the same. They're not the same. Like their application is different. You're using the other HK to project the same from X to H to, to Y. Right. And this one, you're staying in X. And That's right. Different. Yes. Yes. So they are two separate algorithms. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but there is a connection between the two algorithms. Okay. The connection is that you can take HK to be the second derivative. In the first problem, you wanted to scale the entire space itself. In the second problem, or in this method, you're trying to get the best convergence rate by reorienting the descent direction according to the second derivative. Okay, yes? So the constraint and Newton's method is for convex optimization, because the HK should be positive. HK should be positive definite. Yeah. No, this, well, you see, whenever you are talking about a local minimum, suppose your problem is like this, okay? So at each of these points, your second derivative is going to be strictly positive definite, okay? So if you are standing here, 
then your second derivative may not be positive definite but for most of the part as long as you are within the basis of basin of attraction which means as long as you are within this this zone your second derivative will always be positive definite okay and in in all optimization algorithms that we have covered so far the implicit assumption is your x not is close to the optimal point okay because if you are very far away there is no reason for us to believe that it will converge unless you can prove that it is going to converge to the optimal solution. Okay, so if this is the optimal point you are looking for, you should start within this, within this zone. Within this zone, you should pick an x naught within this zone. Of course, you might argue that how do I know which x naught, which zone the optimal solution will be? In fact, you don't know. Okay, which is why you don't always get a good solution. But if you are doing a convex problem, this part is guaranteed to be positive definite, and then you always converge to the global solution, globally minimum solution, right? But as far as non-convex problems are concerned, this is not guaranteed, okay? Uh, and our implicit assumption when we say that this algorithm would converge to a local minimum, the implicit assumption is that x naught is close to the optimal point. Okay, so in fact, if you read a lot of papers about neural networks, which is quite famous these days, you will see that they always talk about local minimum. That's because nobody can actually prove that they, are, they have conversed to a local minimum or not, because it's very hard to justify that you started from a point that is close to a local minimum or to justify that the second derivative is positive definite. Okay, so all you can say is, well, I have conversed to something, I hope that it's a local minimum and it turns out to have a good whatever error percentage or something so it works good in practice so it's fine you put it on alexa and then you ask it to play music or whatever right ask uh, what's the weather today okay that's my favorite thing to ask alexa in the morning uh, okay uh, i guess i'm out of time i just have 2 minutes but next next class we'll talk about a uh, two metric projection method.